Hello there, everyone. Years ago, I set out on a journey that I 100% expected to give up on so hard. It was to solve every single shrine in Breath of the Wild as impractical and ridiculous as possible. Dedicating hours or even days to a specific shrine just to get things as dumb as they could be. And somehow, here we are on the last shrine. Rana Kachta. The intended solution here is get to the shrine. Getting to the shrine isn't even difficult. Yeah, there's some guardians here, but nothing just going forward doesn't fix. After a couple of shrines, I figured I should probably keep track of these or something. So I made a spreadsheet tracking them, and even added some notes of what might be a good solution later on. For this shrine, I thought about wrong warping here, clipping through the ground, getting here by any means other than going through the main entrance. Is it different? Yeah. Is it impractical? No. But the note I wrote on the spreadsheet long ago was bring something with you. Because navigating this hellscape with a friend would be anything but practical. And after shrine number 19, Barrel Bro solidified this shrine's solution. I could have carried literally anything in here. Everything would have progressed the same though. Yeeting them from one platform to another and just immediately retrying if I failed. Bringing a horse or bear here would have been way too easy since raw warps exist and you can just save reload to restore their health and keep trying. But Barrel Bro? The slightest mistake ends it. Omen O, so long ago, started this series with a glitchless solution, and Rana Kachta will bring it to an end just the same. So let's begin. In order to reach the shrine, we have so many hurdles to get over. The biggest one being getting into that hole. The bottom path isn't feasible here as there's no reliable way to get the bro into the hole from down here. Magnesis doesn't reach, and have you ever tried to serve a bro on a platter? Octo balloons from here would require so many to get the elevation in time, and even if we did, we'd still have to nudge it in somehow without going over the explosion height threshold, which is just higher than Link's height, fun fact. So, we must go the road less traveled. And this road only requires yeeting barrel bros at stupid high speeds to cross from one platform to the next, all ultimately to land on the platform in front of the hole, so we can launch him one more time into the hole, and then one more time again over the final gap. Now needless to say, I've got my work cut out for me. And we still have to get into the temple, so I guess let's start there. Luckily, there is a barrel bro hanging out up here about 10 minutes from the Forgotten Temple. I understand that from a gameplay standpoint, this is here to help destroy the rocks to Magna Ra. But who put him up here? This is literally a prison for the bro. He can't climb down on his own and he'll explode if he falls. Now I know I've used the OG bro for literally every other adventure, but he's like two hours away. Eh, that's not gonna eat away at me at all. Short trip across the field and over to this ledge so we can jump off and land on the temple, because breaking our legs is the only way down. We have to go from above because the bottom of the ravine is far too low to try and lift up the bro. There is a door down here though that we could have used if it wasn't too high. Also, why is there a door here? I'm gonna need a three hour in-depth analysis video on the significance of this door. Hop to it. So something that's a bit unfortunate is the top ledge is actually further out than the ledge that the entrance is on. But because of this whole structure not just being one big flat wall, we've got these pillar-like structures that stick out. And we can come over to this rock here and angle ourselves in such a way that when Link jumps, he goes underneath the overhead ledge and lands on the ledge below. Because geometry, see math, can be fun. Also, the backwards jump wasn't just to flex. The bro always rolls off of Link's right side when he lands, so this makes the bro roll inward rather than outwards to its death. But from here, it's just a short walk to the entrance. I quickly dispatch the guardians because being surrounded by explosions the entire time while carrying an explosive barrel is not what I would describe as a good time. This first section here is broken down into four launches. Two small ones to get up on these flat platforms, and two big stressful yeets. The first lift, I spent way too long trying to give the bro the appropriate amount of lift plus the appropriate amount of force to slide it up perfectly onto the platform, and then popping three balloons at once and only three balloons. 
as two or more balloons will lift up the bro above the explosion threshold. And this was just a bad idea. It worked, but there is a better way. All right, we put the bro down over here and then stasis it so we can jump onto it without it rolling. Then we stasis it a second time to reset the timer, use magnesis to drop the balloon straight down, and then jumping up here to get into position. I was able to successfully line Link up in bullet time using my 10-shot bow of light available at every corner store nowadays to apply force and then pop the second balloon, pushing the bro just enough to get up onto the platform safely, and it was way more consistent as well. Launch number two is both simple and terrifying. Max force plus two balloons on the side of the bro, which in itself sounds easy, except sometimes the balloons apply force to the stasis, the bro can just, what I can only describe as scraping the ground ever so slightly to slow the launch. That or there's more drag based on the position of where the balloons are placed. Also, it can just explode because reasons. But when we have the right amount of speed and the balloons are placed just right, all we have to do is detach the balloons before it hits the wall back there. And that is actually really easy to do when you don't forget that bullet time is a thing. Out of all the launches, that's probably second in terms of difficulty. And up until the second to last attempt was required. Yeah. So after the second launch, we're way too high to be able to get into the hole or onto the next platform. So we have to do another leap of faith to get down. And it turns out, you could just walk over here from the first platform. I thought there was a rock in the way or something and just didn't do that. Whoops. Holding ZL while you're holding an object keeps you from walking off the ledges. And it's what allows for walking along these tight spaces all the way to the third platform. Which brings us to the most difficult launch. This one is too cramped to be as precise as we need for the bullet time setup. So instead we climb up here, drop two balloons to lift it up, removing the first balloon and applying 10 arrows of force onto the platform, finally stasising the balloon to stop it from rising too high or going too far. Launch number four is actually kind of fun. Yeah, it didn't believe me there either. Another Max Force 2 balloon launch with bullet time popping. But it was either the feeling of knowing that this was almost over or just yeeting explosive into a goal-shaped hole. It was always pretty exciting to be here. After we get into the hole, there's one more batch of guardians to get rid of. And only one launch stands between us and freedom. And this one is a single octo balloon launch, needing the right amount of forward, but no lift at all. Adding balloons is already really dangerous. But if this one is wrong, even the slightest, then we won't have enough force to cross the gap. Or even worse, it could go down, which doesn't help us. Because these updrafts here don't do anything at all. To set this up, we just channel our inner ocarina of time and use a series of specific movements to end up in the exact same spot. And we do the old smash and grab! There it is. It's over. The shrines are finally over. It took... forever. But it was one heck of a ride. And uh, now, the end is near. And so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I traveled each and every highway and more, much more than this. I did it my I've had a few But then again Too few to mention 
I did what I had to do Saw it through without exemption I planned each charted course Each careful step along the byway And more, much more than this I did it my way Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew When I bit off more than I could chew But through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and spit it out. I faced it all, and I stood tall, and did it my way. I've loved, I've laughed and cried. I've had my fill, my share of losing, and now as tears subside, I find it all so amusing to think I did all that, and may I say. Not in a shy way Oh no Oh no, not me I did it my way For what is a man What has he got If not himself Then he has not To say to go alone from here but thank you for everything my friend yes it was <laughs> uh, I'd do it again. <laughs>